there have been many, many, many British car makers over the years. Some, no, most, wait, pretty much all, have burned out and begun to fade from the memory as the money finally dried up. But not all, a few have survived and even thrived down the years, and perhaps the most exalted of all is Rolls-Royce. There are obviously many fine economic reasons that Rolls has survived this long, and why it continues to be one of the most celebrated brands in the world. But what is clear is that pretty much no other company has continued to strive for excellence at every turn as much as the team from Crew, Derby, and latterly Goodwood. Want wood from a tree in your garden for the dash? That'll be fine, sir. A microwave between the seats? Sure, can't see why not. Whatever the request, Rolls-Royce has and continues to go above and beyond what's normally expected. These are eight of the products that showcase that ethos the best. And if you do enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to make sure you see everything from Goodwood Road Racing. You can't really make a list of the greatest rollers of all time without starting at the very beginning. The first automotive product of a partnership between Charles Rolls and Henry Royce was this, the 10 horsepower. Debuted at the 1904 Paris Salon, the cryptically named Rolls had a 1.8 litre two-cylinder engine producing 10 horsepower. It was built not in Crewe or Goodwood or Derby, but Cook Street, Manchester, and would set you back £395, which might seem a remarkably reasonable RRP until you consider that a similar sum could buy you a house in central London. It was loosely based on Royce's first solo attempt at a car from 1903 and was, for the time, quiet, comfortable and much like a Rolls of a century later. U44, the oldest remaining 10 HP, was sold by Bonhams in 2007 for the princely sum of £3.5 million. A fair amount more than 395 but it doesn't seem too bad when you consider it is the oldest Rolls in the world. In case 1.8 litres doesn't sound luxurious enough for you, three years later, the first truly legendary Rolls-Royce arrived. The Silver Ghost, also built in Manchester originally before Rolls-Royce moved to Derby, had a little more under the bonnet. 5.2 litres more, to be precise. The original Silver Ghost's six-cylinder engine is a full 7 litres and creates around 50 horsepower. Was it any good? When journalists of the time drove it, the autocar wrote, The running of this car at slow speeds is the smoothest thing we have ever experienced. Which is pretty high praise. Over a 20-year production run, the Silver Ghost engine swelled to 7.4 litres. The chassis was strengthened, suspension upgraded, the gearbox went from 4-speed with overdrive to 3-speed with a direct drive, and, wildly, eventually they even put brakes on all four wheels. To showcase its capabilities, the development car, chassis 60551, was even entered into the Scottish Reliability Trial, a 15,000 mile endurance slog, which it completed with ease, setting a new speed record in the process. Another car, chassis 9AD, was driven from London to Edinburgh in top gear alone, a 400 mile journey on which the car managed an average of 24.3 miles per gallon, before being driven at Brooklands for a top speed test during which it managed 78 miles an hour, and later 101.8 miles an hour with different bodywork. Over 6,000 Silver Ghosts were built in Manchester and Derby, and another 1,700 in Springfield, USA. It was also the last car ever built under Charles Rolls, who would become the first British citizen to die in a plane crash when the tail of his right flyer broke off during an air display. The Phantom name on a Rolls-Royce is nothing new. In fact, the first Phantom arrived back in 1925. This one had a 7.6 litre version of the Silver Ghost engine, as well as numerous other tweaks. But while it was undoubtedly a better machine, the Phantom could never quite live up to the Silver Ghost's reputation. It was simply never going to match the sheer surprise of the Silver Ghost's brilliance. Like its predecessors, customers bought just the chassis and mechanicals from Rolls-Royce before the body was made by a coach builder, which is why they don't all look the same. 
the Phantom 1 was built from 1925 to 1929 before it was replaced by the Phantom 2, which would be the last rolls to be based on the Silver Ghost's original 40-50 horsepower underpinnings. In 1936, the third generation Phantom would be the only roller fitted with a V12 until the Silver Seraph arrived in 1998. In the 1930s, Rolls-Royce purchased Bentley, one of its only real rivals left in the UK, allowing the two companies to build better cars for less money by sharing components. The Silver Wraith was not the first post-merger Rolls, but it was the first after the Second World War, with production starting in 1946. Chassis production moved to Crewe, in the factory once used to make Merlin engines, as it turned out far fewer of those would be needed post-war. And, for the first time, Rolls-Royce would sell you a standard body as well as the chassis. The engine was, you guessed it, a straight six. This time at 4.3, 4.6 and later 4.9 litres, and the car was smaller overall than the pre-war Phantom, reflecting what Rolls-Royce perceived to be the post-war national mood. In 1952, it was made available with a four-speed automatic gearbox, a first for Rolls-Royce. That gearbox was bought straight from General Motors, but despite its humble beginnings, it was the start of an important trend for Rolls-Royce that continues today. Silver Ghost, Silver Wraith, Silver Cloud. Are you sensing a theme yet? The Silver Cloud was the replacement for the, um, Silver Dawn and represented something of a departure for Rolls-Royce in design terms, even if not in naming terms. It was, of course, big. But now, the wheels weren't pushed out to all four corners, and there wasn't a big, high, boxy middle like many, if not all, of its predecessors. Bearing a very strong resemblance to the Bentley S1, for obvious reasons, the Silver Cloud used a box section chassis and had much improved brakes and suspension over the outgoing Silver Dawn. There was even electronically controlled damping, power steering, and, from 1956, air conditioning. As standard, the Silver Cloud had a 4-speed automatic gearbox and a 4.9-litre straight-six engine, which was later replaced with a 6.2-litre V8. The Silver Cloud had enough power to top 100 miles an hour, but Rolls-Royce was never vulgar enough to tell you how much horsepower that actually was. The very first Rolls-Royce to be called Corniche was actually developed in 1939, a car based on the new tie-up with Bentley and its Mark V. After 15,000 miles of European testing, the car was destroyed by a bomb before it could ever return to the UK, and with World War II in the offing, the development was shelved. The name, though, was held onto and finally made its way onto a production car in 1971. Available as a coupe or convertible, the Corniche had a 6.75 litre V8 with around 240 horsepower and a three-speed automatic transmission again from General Motors. It also had disc brakes, ventilated ones in 1972, and automatic suspension levelling technology borrowed from Citroen. Over 25 years of production, just under 4,500 Corniches were built, with over three quarters of those convertibles. <laughs> The ownership history of Rolls-Royce isn't particularly straightforward. In fact, there is a whole other video on the story of how BMW swiped Rolls-Royce from the grasp of Volkswagen at the end of the 20th century. But by 2003, the Germans had their hands on Rolls-Royce and there were fears that every new roller was just going to be a great big bimmer. The Phantom was the car that proved those worries wrong. This was Rolls-Royce management's attempt to prove to the world that Rolls-Royce now to be built in Goodwood, rather than Crewe, was as British as a Wellington wrapped in cheddar cheese. Rather than a big BMW, the seventh Phantom turned out to be one of the best cars in Rolls-Royce's history. Its 6.75 litre V12 was the silkiest of silky smooth. The double wishbone suspension could absorb almost any bump the road could offer. The windows were so well double glazed and the sound deadening so thick that there was nearly no road noise at all and the six-speed gearbox was the best fitted to any Rolls-Royce. Then, 
there's the choice of 44,000 colours, not even including the ability to create your own, umbrellas in the doors, heated to make sure they dried after use of course, and the delightful power reserve dial. Basically, the new Rolls-Royce was, if anything, even better than the old company. There are no official figures, but it's believed that around 10,000 Phantoms were sold between 2003 and 2017, each fitted with a 6.75 litre V12 producing around 450 horsepower. Considering a base price of £250,000 and with pretty much everyone customised in some way, we'd say it was a bit of a success. Yes, 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 yeah, 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 you don't like SUVs, fine. But think about it. If there is any company in the world that fits making an overly big, overly ostentatious car, then surely it has to be Rolls-Royce. Finally, someone has come along and created a proper step up from the Range Rover. So most owners, or probably around 99% of them, will never take a Cullinan off-road. But tests have shown that should they wish to, it would be capable, and it'll be the most comfortable off-road experience anyone has ever had. There are, of course, better cars off-road, but none of them have the breadth of ability that the Cullinan has in spades. It's named, suitably grandly, after the largest diamond ever discovered. Not only that, but that diamond sits neatly in the British Crown Jewels, a bit of a metaphor for Rolls-Royce, you might say. Cullinan the car has a 6.75 litre V12 with a suitable 571 horsepower and a frankly bonkers 850 newton metres of torque at just 1,600 rpm. There's also all-wheel drive, four-wheel steering and an eight-speed ZF gearbox that uses satellite data to choose the right gear for the upcoming corner. A bit different to that four-speed unit from GM. Oh. There's also a camera that scans the road ahead to prepare the suspension and a wading depth of 54 centimetres. Those are our favourite Rolls-Royces of all time. But what have we missed out? What is the most luxurious car Rolls-Royce has ever made? Let us know in the comments below. <laughs>